What's going on everyone? Another good morning. A couple things before we start my 59th review commentary for 10 Cloverfield Lane. One, there's a lot of thunder and rain going on outside and you're probably going to hear that. So I apologize for that. Two, um, this has since gotten a sequel which I did review. Um, I have not edited and have not published that video but it will come out someday, probably. But uh, until then, let's just start this review commentary. And when you can't think of a clever intro, you just react some way. Anyway, um, this review is interesting because I remember my buddy Keith watched it and thought it was amazing. It's one of those movies you gotta talk about right after you see it. Um, he thought it was really great and told me to see it even though I hadn't seen the original Cloverfield. So, back then going to see a movie while it's still in theaters was, you know, a fun concept for me because I didn't go to the movies nearly as much as I do now. So, I went and saw 10 Cloverfield Lane with my significant other at the time and we just, well, I was really fucking blown away. It was a crazy movie with a crazy concept and a crazy script and it made you think about the human psyche in ways that I didn't like expect. I thought it I had like a different 10 different ideas for what the movie was actually going to be and none of them came true. And the ending, people complain about the ending I only saw the movie the one time, so I'm going off of a hazy memory, but I fucking loved the ending the first time around, just because I was so just kind of awestruck. And... <sighs> but anyway, um, the ending doesn't really matter. Like, you could literally roll the credits, like, minus, you could have rolled the credits and knocked out the last 15, 20 minutes or however long it is. And it still would have been a great movie. It could have been nothing to do with Cloverfield, which I'm pretty sure that's how it was. Cloverfield movies are big sellouts. Um, every single one of them. But that's besides the point. Because two out of three of them, assuming the first one is good, is really good. John Goodman. It was like May 26, 2013, something like that. I forget the year it was. Oh, I'm telling this story. That's how you find out about crazy people. You just are around them long enough to watch their psyche kind of show its true colors. In theaters May 11, 2016, or March 11th. That is, uh, just seeing old dates freaks me out sometimes. You know, like seeing the last digit slowly creep away from you. This is what I was talking about earlier with the 10 different ideas. I've seen a couple movies that have done that uh, to me kind of recently. I saw Hereditary, which had one moment I was really freaking the fuck out. Um, what were some of my, the other ones? There's a couple other movies I've seen recently. Um, a Quiet Place had, like, okay moments, but nothing that really made me really, like, actually scared. Edit this shit. Movie reviews. Um. There's one I'm thinking of. What is it? Annihilation. That was it. 
Annihilation destroyed me on terms of making you like freak out like that. Like actually gripping your seat and being like, oh. I think that's one of my favorite like feelings that art gives me, that intenseness. I feel like every, even introverts have that little daredevil inside them, that little adrenaline ju junkie that I think exists in all of us. Even the pussies like me, we have little adrenal adrenaline rush. Uh, oh my god, Hall of Fame badge. I think this is the first movie I gave that to. Um, that's awesome. It deserves it. I still have not watched this film since the, it's been two years. Up, then down, are we around? And up, then down. Anyway guys, thank you for watching today's review commentary. Um, this is another long, in, long outro, so I'm just gonna cut it. I'll see you in the next Good Morning Soul, and until then, with that, I leave you.